All right, kiddos. I am trying out a new app on my iPad for recording videos, so we're going to see how this goes. Today is percents and percent of change. Not a whole lot of new to you because you've done percents and percent bars. The new part of this is going to be the percent of change. Let's just jump right into it. Number one says 40% of what number is 14? Well, you've done these kinds of problems before, and so your teacher probably showed you you need to set up a proportion. Some teachers use is over of equals percent over 100, and that's how they solve these problems. I think the is over of is misleading sometimes and can be confusing when you read a problem. So whenever I set these up, I always do part over whole equals the percent over 100. And it still has the percent over 100 part, but instead of is over of, I use part over whole. And so then we're going to read the problem again. It says 40% of what number is 14? Well, the percent is 40, so I know I have to have 40% over 100. Now for the part over whole, it tells us that 40% is 14. Well, that means that the 14 must go with the 40 because 40% 40 is 14. And then the of what number is the thing we do not know. So now we have a proportion we can cross multiply and solve. And so we're going to tr treat it that way. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cross multiply and we're going to solve. So, I'm going to multiply this way, 40 times x becomes 40x, and then 14 times 100 is 1400, and so when I divide both sides by 40, I get that x equals 35, and so 40% of 35 equals 14, and that's how we do that problem. We just set it up, part over whole equals percent over 100. Now, number three is the same kind of problem, but I happen to know that it doesn't work out very nice, so I'm going to make a change. I want you to change this 70 right here to a 27. Actually, yours probably says that, but for some reason, mine still says 70. So if 90% of G is 27, we want to find out 18% of G. Well, you can't do anything until you know what G is. So we're going to use the same rule, just like we used over here a minute ago. We're going to use the same rule that we used right here, this part over whole equals percent over 100. And we're going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to rewrite it. So my percent is 90, so I know that 90% over 100. And I happen to know that 90% is 27, so the 27 has to go with the, with the 90%, and then I have my G. So I'm going to cross multiply. Well, G times 90 is 90G. And then 27 times 100 is 2700. Well, so then I'm going to divide both sides by 90. And when I do that, I get that G equals 30. So 90% of 30 should equal 27. That makes sense. If it's almost, you know, if it's 90%, it's going to be pretty close. So now I've got to find 18% of G. So we're going to do it the same way. We're going to set up our problem. I want to find 18% of G and so I have that's 18 percent over 100 now here's what I know they say of G 18 percent of G well 18 percent is not G we want to know what 18 percent is so the is part is or the part is going to be X the G goes down here just like it did in the other one in the denominator so now I can cross multiply I'm gonna have 30 times 18 which equals 540. And then x times 100 is just 100x. And so when I divide both sides by 100, all it does is move this decimal point here. But if you take your calculator, you can do it, and you will get that x equals 5.4. And so 18% of 30 is 5.4. It's not very much because 18% is not a lot. So now we're going to go on to where so we're going to do some problems that involve um, using a percent bar. So number three, a car salesman earns 3.5% commission on every car he sells. If he received $875 for the last car he sold, what was the selling price of the car? Well, the first thing we have to do is set up a percent bar to help us solve this. We have been practicing commission problems for the last couple of weeks and every time we do it we write an expression. Today we're just going to do a percent bar. I don't draw a bar though. I draw a line because I find it to be more efficient and my rectangles get wonky sometimes so I just draw a line. 
And you know on a percent bar, 100% is always down here. And that represents the entire whatever we are dealing with. It, it represents the whole. Well, in this case, that would be the selling price of the car, which we don't know. 100% would be how much the car was. We know that he got $875 for it, which was the same as 3.5% because that's how much commission he gets. The great thing about percent bars is you don't have to convert your percents into decimals. You don't have to scooch that decimal over in order to solve it. The percent bar takes care of that. So we'll cross multiply. 3.5 times x becomes 3.5x. And then 875 times 100 is 875 with two zeros. And so when I divide both sides by 3.5, I get that X, or the selling price of the car, was $25,000. So that's how much the car cost, and he got to keep $875 of that. So now number four. The East High School gym needs to be painted. The painters estimated that it would take about 20 hours for them to paint the entire thing. If they've already worked for five hours, what percent have they finished? Percent bar. 100% would represent the entire gym, and they said that would be 20 hours. So far, they've only worked 5 hours. We want to know what percent that is. So we're going to cross multiply. Well, x times 20 is 20x, and 5 times 100 gives me 500. And so then when I divide both sides by 20, I get that x equals... 25 and since X is down here on the bottom with the percents that means that the guys have finished painting 25% of the gym they're one-fourth of the way done so the last question here just asks for an expression it says Zach wants to buy a skateboard that is on sale for 18% of the regular price the original price of the skateboard was C dollars write an expression that represents the sale price of the skateboard we just need an expression I don't even, it doesn't have to be an equation. I don't have to solve it. I don't need to find the sale price of the skateboard. I just want an expression. There's two ways to look at this. Way number one, if the original price of the skateboard represents 100%, and then I take 18% off of that, it leaves me with 82%. So what that means is that when I buy it on sale, I'm really only paying 82% of the price. So I could, do, I could write my expression this way. 82% of the cost of the skateboard will give me the sale price. I could also do it this way because what y'all know is that if you take the original price of the skateboard and subtract from that the sale price of the skateboard, then you will have what the skateboard equals or you'll have the sale price. Well, to get what, the, what you're going to save, you have to then do 18% of the cost of the skateboard. So you would subtract those two. Either of those expressions works. Either one of them could show up as an answer on a test. But I like the first one, but they are both correct. So now let's talk percent of change. So percent of change is going to be something new for you. Um, you've seen it probably before you've dealt with it. Anytime you do a discount or a sales tax kind of problem, it's a percent of change. You're just usually given the percent. We're going to be finding the percent now, and there's a couple ways to do it. Number one, you could use a percent bar, which you are used to, or you can use this formula. Here's how the formula goes. To find percent of change, you take the difference, which everybody knows means, that's right, subtraction. So you take the difference of the old and the new, whatever they happen to be, prices, sizes, but the old and the new. You divide everything by the old or original, and then you multiply by 100 to find out what the percent is. That times 100 is what makes it a percent. The rest of it just gives you the answer. And this, by the way, is how I grade all of your tests and quizzes. I take the number you got right, so I subtract the number you missed and how many questions were on the quiz, so that's the difference of the old and the new. I divide by the old, which is the number of questions on the quiz, and then I multiply by 100, give you your percentage. That's how I, every time I grade, that's what I do. I create a percentage change. So here's how it works. There's a sale going on at the jean shop. A pair of jeans that have been just priced at $45 is now on sale for $30. We want to find the percentage change. Step one, we've got to find the difference of the old and the new. Well, they were $45, now they're $30. 
Well, the original or old price of the jeans is $45 because it, it says it had been 45 and then times 100. So we'll just find out what this equals. Well, 45 minus 30 is 15 over 45 times 100. Well, 15 over 45, when I divide that, is going to be a repeating decimal. It's going to come out to 0 0.33333 because that reduces down to one third. Since we are talking about a percent, I, ca I can use my repeating decimal, but when I take that 0.333 and I multiply it, by 100, it scoots that decimal point over, and so what I get is I have 33 percent with threes repeating, so really what I end up with is 33 and one-third percent. And so the percent of change is 33 and one-third percent. They are now 33 and one-third percent cheaper than they were before. So let's do the last question. Mr. McGee's algebra class started the year with 25 students. By the end of the first six weeks, there were a total of 32 students. By what percent did the class increase? First thing I have to do, I have to find the difference between the old and the new. And when you do the difference, you always do big minus small so that your answer comes out positive. So the old and the new, 32 minus 25. I realize that the 25 is the original number. It's how many students were in the class to begin with. But if you don't, if you subtract 25 minus 32, you get a negative, and we don't want a negative percent. So the difference between the old and the new divided by the old. The old number of students was 25, not 32. That's the old number. Then I have to multiply by 100. So 32 minus 25 is going to be 7. So I end up with 7 over 25 times 100. And when I do 7 divided by 25, it comes out to be 0.28 times 100. Well, 0.28 times 100 becomes, you scoop the decimal two places to the right, becomes 28%. And so what I know is that now Mr. McGee's algebra class has 28% more kids in it than it did at the beginning of the year. So that is percents and percent of change. I hope it all makes sense. I hope that the app worked pretty well, and I will see you guys tomorrow.